Alfred Wegener was a German meteorologist who had a few risky hobbies. He loved hot air balloons and even proposed to his girlfriend in one. Wegener was the kind of guy who couldn't sit still. That's partly why he gave up astronomy, the field he was trained in. One science was just not enough. To learn more about the Earth, he read any scientific paper he could get his hands on. Wegener was looking over an atlas when he noticed something curious. Wegener later told this story himself. He said, I started looking at it, and it was really odd. He said, I'd always noticed that Africa and South America fit together. He said, but this map had information from deep down in the Atlantic Ocean. And what it showed is that that match between South America and Africa goes all the way along the continental shelf, all the way down to the foot of Africa. Now, if this is the case, he said, he thought immediately and pointed it out to his office mate, this isn't just an accident of sea level that these things look alike. These things look alike because they're connected in some way. Almost for fun, Wegener developed an idea that the continents were once connected and drifted apart over time. Wegener's original idea about continental drift was a momentary intuition. For it to get to be science, you have to uh, make the idea real. In two years, he had found his evidence. A first clue was the Mesosaurus. Fossils of this prehistoric reptile had been found in both Brazil and South Africa. It was, Wegener said, too small to have swum 5,000 miles across the Atlantic. He found a second clue in the Karoo Desert in South Africa. Here, massive glaciers had left giant scars and scrapes on the rocks. It didn't make sense. Glaciers in burning hot deserts? And what about the coal deposits found on the Arctic islands of Spitsbergen? Geologists knew that coal formed only in tropical forests. To other scientists, it was all a big mystery. To Wegener, these clues were the building blocks of a really radical theory. He proposed that all the continents were once joined in a giant supercontinent. He named it Pangaea. He published his theory of continental drift. This should have made him famous. Instead, he was bitterly criticized by leading geologists. Many of them said disparagingly this was a theory of the Earth proposed by a weatherman, you know, who moved continents around the way clouds move, but the Earth is this big solid thing. Continents don't just get up and skate around like pats of hot butter on a skillet. Geologists had a completely different idea. In the late 19th century, most geologists subscribed to a theory they called contraction theory. This was the idea that early in Earth history, the Earth was an incandescent globe of hot gases. Then, over geological time, as the Earth cooled, it continued to contract. And as it contracted, this crust collapsed. But the whole thing doesn't fall at once. Pieces of it fall first and then other pieces. And that's more or less how geologists imagine the Earth. Wegener didn't buy this theory. He was sure he was on the right track and passionately defended continental drift. Although he educated himself well in geology, Wegener was still considered an outsider to the field. And there was one crucial weakness to his theory. How did the continents actually move? This he could not explain or prove. Wegener didn't know what made the continents move. And frankly, I don't think he thought that was his problem. He felt that that was something that other people would have to work on. Wegener would wait for the answer, but it would not come in his lifetime. 